government is shit. The reputation of the CIA is just as bad. And when you dig into the truth about these puppet presidential candidates, you find just as much sewage. And the people would like to have a constitutional candidate, but I think it's time to retire the entire system of leadership. It's too much power in the hands of too few people, and they all become corrupt. And they're in no time, they're selling guns to Mexican drug dealers, making a little side money like a mafia. And what's really shocking is Obama did not ask for Eric Holder's resignation when this attorney general was caught running guns in a program called Fast and Furious. Why not? Because it's one entirely corrupt government that needs to be taken down, dismantled. We should dismantle the government, not the Constitution. We have an illegal alien with no birth certificate dismantling our Constitution and signing executive orders. And this cannot last. This must come down. And the only way it's going to come down is not through your representative, not by Jesus coming back, not by aliens landing and saving us all. It's going to happen because you pick up a microphone. And if each one of us drops a little stone into the quiet pond and makes a tiny wave, the aggregate of all of those waves will be a tsunami of change in this country. If you love your country, pick up a microphone and tell the truth. Research and find the truth. Don't just repeat the propaganda that you heard because that shows how ignorant you are and that you're afraid to read. Go to the activist post and pick an article, a current article or one from the archives. It doesn't matter to me. Go to War is Crime. Go to the bottom right corner where they have all the links to all of the alternate news publications, websites. And go through each one of them and find an article that you really believe in. Read it 20 times and then turn on your mic and read it one more time for the people. And if you have something to add, it would be most pleasurable to hear how you feel, especially if you're angry and you want to tell us how you really feel inside. Think it out, write it out so you know exactly what you're going to say and then say it on tape. When you watch an interview like the one between Adam Kokesh and Luke Rudkowski, it inspires you to do the same. But you know, these guys are very good. Very good. I was surprised how skilled Adam is in handling the camera and the microphone. I was surprised how skilled Luke Rudkowski is in handling the microphone and the questions and then being patient enough to allow the guest to answer the question in full. I was surprised how cogent Adam Kokesh was. It's hard for me to believe that it's the same guy who advocated marching on Washington with loaded guns because that is a really stupid idea. How can the asshole who came up with that idea be the same guy? Did six days in prison change him that much? because he came out a lot more sensible. He seems to respect the fact that these Nazis have everything tied up. They will beat the shit out of you even if you have handcuffs on, and they'll get away with it, because that's a perk for them, given to them by the Nazis. Where is that going to lead this whole country? Not in the direction of freedom. I'll guarantee you that. And that marshal who threatened Adam Kokesh, he needs to think about this a little bit and stop being so ignorant. The badge and the gun is not a license to beat the shit out of somebody in handcuffs. But I'm glad to report to you that the March on Washington with loaded guns is over. And Adam Kokesh is now saying that the people are going to march on their state capitals. I don't think that's a good idea either. Let's see how it turns out. It's about a month away. I doubt very much that people are going to drive from Los Angeles to Sacramento. For me, this would be a five-day trip because I don't drive 30 hours in one day. I drive at most eight hours and I rest because I don't want to get killed on the highway. And I don't want to kill anybody on the highway or anywhere else. I want to rest up and if I arrive to march on a capital, I want to be rested so I make good decisions because one false move and you're dead. These cops are waiting to take you out. They think they're serving their country by shooting you, but who they are really serving are the Nazis. They're supporting a dictatorship and they don't even know it yet. Nobody has ever told a cop, you're working for Nazis. You're working against the people and against the Constitution. You are not a hero. You are a piece of shit. A worthless piece of shit. Human garbage. That's what you are. The next time you see your fat, ugly face in the mirror, repeat after me. I am a worthless piece of donut shit. I have donut dough for brains. Like a donut, my brain has a hole in the middle. Some of it is missing. Look in the mirror, all you doughboys, and say this. I am not a hero. I am a loser. I am not helping my country. I am dismantling the Constitution and destroying my country. I am not worth my paycheck. 
someone should take my paycheck away from me and put me out of my misery because I'm never going to change and I'm never going to understand the true meaning of the Constitution. My grandchildren will hate me because the only thing I could think about was donuts and I never thought about the Constitution. I don't even know what the First Amendment is or the second or the third, but I know the chocolate eclairs and the custard fills very well and one large coffee to go. That's the only thing I know. And the Constitution to me was likely a television show. It may have played on the air, but I don't really know. All I know is three glazed and a large coffee to go. <laughs> now, Adam Kokesh has come up with a few ideas. I don't know how many, and it doesn't matter. His march on Washington was a bad idea, and so was the march on the state capitol, because people are not going to drive five days. They're certainly not going to get on a plane with a loaded gun. If Adam has come up with 46 ideas, let me give you number 47. Have your people pick up a different kind of weapon, the microphone. If you advocate this idea, it could be associated with your name, the Adam Kokesh idea. So take my advice. The microphone is a weapon. Let's call it the Adam Kokesh weapon. And this is idea number 47 for you to consider. I think I have one that finally makes sense, the microphone. The Adam Kokesh idea number 47, and for short, let's just call it the AK-47. Ooh, what did I say? AK-47? The microphone is more powerful than the Russian military weapon, and the Nazis know it. That's why they want to ban free speech. The truth is poison to a Nazi. They worked so hard to keep you misinformed, and now you're all moving away from the propaganda news and picking up AK-47 microphones and whipping their asses. Good job. If you were all hoping for fireworks this July 4th, forget it. Nobody is going to drive from Los Angeles to Sacramento so they can be arrested or pepper sprayed. Try my idea number 47 and pick up a mic. It's safer and much more effective because when the people know the truth, they move like a large body of water, an ocean wave that comes to shore ever so gently and then it crushes everything in its path like a tsunami wave. Do you remember December 26, 2004? A gentle wave came in to shore and it just kept coming in and it rolled all across the land and it pushed automobiles against people, against buildings, and the people were crushed and drowned. It knocked down everything in its path and then it turned the other direction and went back out to sea and dragged all that debris across the land and scraped it clean. It was an amazing event and 250,000 people died so fast that it was hard to even say tsunami wave before it was all over. And the power that people have is just like that. Each one of you is a drop of water, but when you're all moving in the same direction, you have a force that's unstoppable and no matter how many bullets you fire at a tsunami wave, you cannot stop it. You can hit it with large artillery and you cannot stop it. But you have one Adam Kokesh who takes the high profile and the Nazis will kill him with a 50 caliber round and just blow his head off. And all the people will say he deserved it for marching on Washington with loaded guns. And so that's why I say it's a bad approach. But if you just tell the truth and they kill you, there's sympathy for you. And that body of water breaks free and starts to move towards the Nazis. And as it comes into shore, it knocks down everything in its path and drowns people and crushes them. And when it goes back out to shore, it pulls all that debris with it and scrapes the ground clean. And so it may take more patience and the hotheads are not gonna be satisfied with spreading the truth, but we need to use our numbers to our advantage. And so the people must be informed, spread the truth, and in time, we will have the power back, all of it, and we will get rid of all governments. We don't need any fucking government because as soon as you put power into the hands of anyone, it corrupts them. How difficult is the concept that's two words, power corrupts. You want to make it complicated? Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And this government has absolute power because they have control of the police, control of the military, and control of the people. What they fear most is the people, because the people can spread the truth. And when people have the truth and guns, look out, because they're going to be gunning for the Nazis.
So they have to take away your First and Second Amendment rights, right to free speech, right to bear arms, because the combination of the two and the truth is very dangerous. We have people like Bradley Manning and Julian Assange delivering the truth to the people finally, and this is bad news for the dictatorship. They only have three legs, the people, the cops, and the military. And if you come along with the truth and erode one of those legs, that table is going to fall that the dictator stands on. Just need one of the three. Knock out one. Convince the people, convince the cops, or convince the military. I think the military is easy. I think those guys are much more sensible than cops. You can lead a cop anywhere you want. Just get a fishing line and put a donut on the end and dangle it in front of him. He'll go anywhere that donut goes. That's the mentality of cops. They're goons, all of them, almost. There are some exceptions. There are some really good people who are cops. They have college educations. They know what's going on in the world. They know that they have to choose between the Nazis and the people. They have to choose between a totalitarian dictatorship and the Constitution. And these people are capable of making the right decisions. And I'm sorry that I called them donut heads or whatever it was, doughboys. But I have to taunt the cops because I want them to come into line. I want them to wake up, fess up that they are not a bunch of heroes. They are a bunch of losers with badges and guns. They're dangerous. They violate constitutional rights of the people. And And this makes them less than honorable and a target for my insults. Because I'm not going to sit by and let the cops violate the people's rights by pepper spraying them and punching unarmed women in the face and making arrests. Not going to let them get away with that. I'm going to launch my own verbal attack on them. I'm not going to launch a violent attack because I think that's wrong. But I do believe that the people might do that. And I want to try to avoid that. The people might firebomb their squad cars, take sniper action, shoot right through their windshields, shoot their tires when the guy gets out of the car, kill him. I don't know what they're going to do, but I don't want them to kill a good cop. I don't want them to kill a cop who has had a reputation for standing up for something, the Constitution, and he would not violate the Constitution. And I hope those good cops will step forward and say, it is wrong to violate the constitutional rights of anyone, and if you fellow officers do it, the people are going to one day take revenge on you, and they might kill me too. And that would be unfortunate because I believe in the Constitution. And you guys don't. And so we have a little division here on this police department. And you guys are a threat to the safety of the rest of us. And if I ever hear about you violating the rights of people, I'm going to take you aside and tell you, bad cop, no donut. Bad cop, no donut. Bad cop, no donut. Motherfucker. Cops. Seriously, though, cops should recognize that the people have the numbers and however badass they are when they've got somebody in handcuffs and there are 20 cops around and just one accused. And they can mouth off all they want. When the people hear such stories, it makes them angry at that uniform. And no matter who is wearing that uniform, the people want revenge. And when the flashpoint occurs, we reach the tipping point and everybody has turned on the establishment, the cops, the politicians, the Nazis behind them, and they want blood. The cops are in the first line of defense for the Nazis, and they will be mowed down by the people. When the truth is known, the reputation of the government is shit. The reputation of the CIA is just as bad. And when you dig into the truth about these puppet presidential candidates, you find just as much sewage. And the people would like to have a constitutional candidate, but I think it's time to retire the entire system of leadership. It's too much power in the hands of too few people, and they all become corrupt. And they're in no time, they're selling guns to Mexican drug dealers, making a little side money like a mafia. And what's really shocking is Obama did not ask for Eric Holder's resignation when this attorney general was caught running guns in a program called Fast and Furious. Why not? Because it's one entirely corrupt government that needs to be taken down, dismantled. We should dismantle the government, not the Constitution. We have an illegal alien with no birth certificate dismantling our Constitution and signing executive orders. And this cannot last. This must come down. And the only way it's going to come down is not through your representative, not by Jesus coming back, not by aliens landing and saving us all. It's going to happen because you pick up a microphone. And if each one of us drops a little stone into the quiet pond and makes a tiny wave, the aggregate of all of those waves will be a tsunami of change in this country. If you love your country, pick up a microphone and tell the truth. 
Research and find the truth. Don't just repeat the propaganda that you heard because that shows how ignorant you are and that you're afraid to read. Go to the activist post and pick an article. A current article or one from the archives. It doesn't matter to me. Go to War is Crime. Go to the bottom right corner where they have all the links to all of the alternate news publications, websites. And go through each one of them and find an article that you really believe 